My dad needed heart surgery. He was seeking care for some heart issues here in Iowa. During some of the preliminary blood testing, he found out that he had low platelets. And so he was diagnosed with von Wildebrandt's disease. He lived thinking that he had von Wildebrandt's and ended up that he had, um, later on down the road, he had endocarditis. It did some damage to his heart and he was going to need surgery again. And at that time, he really wanted to go to Mayo and just have the best possible care. So Mallory's father had uh, cardiovascular problems and was being seen by cardiovascular surgery. And uh, they saw this bleeding condition and wanted hematology to manage that. So I found out that I had low platelets during pregnancy and I went and saw a hematologist and they pretty much just chalked it up to pregnancy induced um, low platelets. I had another pregnancy and again had low platelets. Again, I thought it was just because of pregnancy. But then when my second son was born, when he was about 10 months old, he started having um, some health issues and we found out through his blood counts that he also had low platelets. I wasn't seeing the connection between my dad and I. So it was after his surgery that then we were kind of approached by Mayo. Were we interested in finding out what the connection was? In her case, all the routine laboratory tests had been done and couldn't find the answer. And when you see something like this, which is running in families, you have to, you know, think about interrogating the genome to see what part of the genome, you know, is responsible for this kind of dominant inheritance in the family. In her case, we did what is called as whole exome sequencing. Dr. Mirno Patniak came to us and described to us some cases that he had been working on where genomic sequencing had been used to make a diagnosis which informed not just the patient but their family and helped them have better treatment and more precise diagnosis. So we sequenced her and her father, both of whom had low platelets, and her mother who had a normal blood count. So that allowed us to hone in on a very particular specific gene called RUNX1. And this is a very important transcription factor that is required for normal development of blood counts. This gene mutation not only causes low platelets, but it increases the risk for blood cancer development. So instituting monitoring, surveillance, early bone marrow transplantation could save their lives and provide them with longevity that they richly deserve. And so they kind of inspired us, to use the right word, you know, to go ahead and do this so that other people in their setting don't take years to get to the diagnosis but have ready access for this kind of precision medicine. We were therefore pleased to offer our support to take that experience and launch it into a much wider clinical practice. We call our premyeloid and bone marrow failure clinic to try and understand why patients with unexplained low blood counts have that problem and whether or not it may have a genomic basis offering hope, I think, and some healing for the family. So Sawyer is my five-year-old who also has this RUNX1 bleeding disorder, and he is the busiest of the boys. And looking back, when he was a 10-month-old baby and we didn't know what this bleeding disorder was, what it meant for us, I think now I can just let him be himself and be that active little boy and do all the things that he loves and enjoys doing. I think now that we have answers, we can just let our kids be kids and enjoy wrestling and playing and climbing without having to be so concerned about all the what ifs.